Let's move to the Dallas Cowboys, who don't seem to be any closer to signing Dak Prescott to a new deal, especially after reports started flying that Dak was asking for $40 million a year. But even with the quarterback's negotiations going sideways, Jerry Jones says the situation shouldn't affect what, he, what his QB does on the field. It's not an issue, his contract is to uh, uh, playing frame of mind, what we're going to be doing this year. It's not an issue at all. It has no bearing on, uh, as I see it, it's something that uh, is more about the future. You buying that these negotiations will have no impact on Dak this season? I am buying it. Um, I think of all the attributes that I love about athletes, high-level athletes, the greatest is the ability to compartmentalize, like to just simply grab pieces of life and put them in their proper order at the right times and prioritize. So uh, uh, Dak Prescott, who's been through his own traumatic experiences, I've been through it as well, lost my mother. He lost his mother to cancer, both of us. I bring that up because it gives you a greater perspective and a bandwidth to deal with situations differently. And imagine a guy who's picked in the fourth round behind Tony Romo and what that mindset is. Fourth round's no guarantees on the NFL roster. We used to always say, first three, you're good. After that, and then lower, obviously, good luck. And this is a guy who all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, is the franchise quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. We reset his expectations, but there's still a part of him in his blood flow that's like, man, I'm on borrowed time. He's made $2.7 million in three years, and he's going to make $2 million this year. And everyone's like, oh, my God, if he doesn't get his contract right now, how's he going to respond? What? Based on what he's been through in his personal life, based on what he's been through in his professional life, you think this is the disturbance? When he's guaranteed, unless lightning hits him, $60 million going forward. Guaranteed, unless he just falls off planet Earth. I think he's fine. Jerry knows that, and that's why the negotiation's slow playing. I think, if anything, it, it could help his performance and it could help the Dallas Cowboys because he's playing for his next contract. And typically, when players are playing for their next contract, they perform at a, an extremely high level. We saw it with, with Joe Flacco. What was his best year? The year that he was playing for his contract. So from, a, from an organizational perspective, there's no reason to rush this. He's going to play. He's, he's got to play really well because if he doesn't, the number's only going to go down. But he's got the potential to make the number skyrocket, but it's completely controlled by him. So I, I think it's a positive thing. I, I think, uh, I think of the, uh, what, Tribe Call question here, stakes is high? Mm, no, yeah. that's De La So. De La So, yeah, stakes yeah, is yeah, high, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, and so <laughs> that's what this reminds me of. Stakes are very high, and I get that Dax had some success, and everybody overcomes things, but I don't think Dak is fully aware of who he is. Hmm. Because if he was, I think this contract issue would have been settled. Dak thinks he's Russell Wilson, and he's not. And I think he's going to try to do too much this year because of this contract situation. And I think the personalities in that locker room are going to change because of this contract situation if it continues to play out and play out and play out. And if Dak goes over $30 million a year, Lord help him, I think those guys in that locker room are going to eat him up. So I completely <laughs> disagree with uh, Jerry Jones. Right. I think this league is obsessed with money. I, I watching Hard Knocks last night. Mm. Rookies come up and talk, and, and they got to tell what their signing bonus is. Yeah. yeah. The, the league is obsessed with money. And when Dak walks in there at $30 million or whatever, or if he doesn't sign, whatever, it's going to be a nightmare in my opinion. I disagree with that. Like, I knew who I was when I was a free agent the first time. And I knew I wasn't better than Bruce Smith. And I certainly knew I wasn't better than Junior Seau. But I got paid more than both of them. And you know what? You just had to go that way because I was next. And it's just, it's just like, you got to go with the inflation. It, it, it's rising all these boats. And I don't give a damn you got a yacht. Guess what? My boat's up here at the same float level as you. And Dak knows himself. He's built for both worlds. He's built for the understated fourth-round guy who came and is taking it all in. Marcellus, I'm going to say this. When you got your money, when healthy, you could go get it. Plain and simple. Didn't yeah. need no help, you could go get it. That's not Dak Prescott. Sandy ain't good. I, I, I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> Dak is good. What do you mean? I, I, I don't think that's a, a totally fair <laughs> yeah, assessment. Yeah, I know. Now, look, guys are, are consumed with money. 
And unfortunately for those rookies, those signing bonuses are a lot less a lot than better. they used to be Man. with the new CBA. He's made a ton of money off the field. But 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 you're you're not only paying a guy for who he is, but you're also paying a guy for who you think he can be. And and Case sometimes Keenum. sometimes we, sometimes we look at this and say <laughs> that the player is going to stay where they are. Mm. That's not true because of traits. He has the potential to keep growing and keep rising. I could be a Ditter Salva. I could be, if I just lost the weight. Coming up, we'll give you our latest approval ratings for John Gruden and Uncle Jimmy. We'll